Okay, so just went to go see um, Glass Night M. Sh is it M. Night Shyamalan? I've never known how to say his name. It's Shyamalan. Hama, Lama. Anyways, M. Night Shyamalan's film Glass. Um, if you are familiar with his films, you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Um, if you're not familiar with his films, then this movie. Um, might take you by surprise a little bit it's not going to be what you think uh for instance if you are a fan of the marvel series and or anything that sony has brought to the table or even the dc films this is not that uh but this definitely caters to uh those of us who may consider to be comic book nerds or geeks uh if you will um, but this definitely is a genre uh, or a universe for us. This film is the third installment of, I would call, a three-part saga. Uh, the first film was Unbreakable. The second one was obviously Split. And this is the third, which is Glass. And each of them, I would say, are origins or the start of stories dedicated to uh, these three characters which would be David or I believe they called him the overseer uh, I believe it was the overseer is the name that they referenced uh, more than like three times so we're gonna go with that the beast who had a is the word conclave the horde he had a horde they call themselves the horde because he had multiple personalities um the, but the beast was the you know the prevalent one where uh he had super strength and like animalistic powers uh, mr glass whose vulnerability of weak bones um that were very fragile like glass but he was a mastermind uh, a genius villain uh, I'm gonna try to review it without giving too many explo uh, or, or spoilers but spoiler alert because I might just slip up when I start going so spoiler alert if you haven't seen it you might want to cut this off go watch it come back see my thoughts on the whole situation night does weird things in film i'm gonna first say that i feel like i am um the minority no pun intended on knight's films because i find the guy to be really creative i find him to be creative and i really enjoy his imagination when uh writing and producing these films uh, for instance, The Happening, nobody liked that film, but I actually found it uh, creative in a, in a way. I found it uh, very imaginative, and I actually found it to be really creepy, just, you know, because, you know, let's just use the word, the phrase natural selection, uh, where the earth is trying to kill you. That's pretty terrifying, but I digress. Uh, other films that he's known for uh, the village which either people loved it or they hate it that's kind of who he is you either like enjoy his stuff you know fairly or you just absolutely despise it you know that's kind of how I see the consensus happening uh, I definitely but like I said I'm definitely a fan of his creativity um, the uniqueness in writing style that he has and the way that he presents it he has a flair a thing that he does uh and he definitely applies it to unbreakable he applies it to split he applies it here as well he does the m night thing so expect that in this film it, it takes its time um telling its story it does not rush into anything it does give you some 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 grit and some beef in the beginning of the film where you get some action um kind of right off the bat which is a little different for him i would say but 
it was nice because it, it pulled you in but then it was like okay we're gonna take our time now we're gonna slow dance this out for a little bit so be prepared for that more grit at the third act um which for me was good it was it was a solid payoff some people uh i was uh, watching a review before and some people were were saying that um they didn't like it or they were confused like really they're going to end it that way to me i actually think that worked for the film if he went forward with the climatic would he you know twist okay if he went forward with that climatic which you think or thought may have happened i think it would have cheapened the film that's just my opinion my opinion alone but i think if he did what you would expect out of a, a, a hero film or something like that it would have been it actually would have been a snoozer it would have been like predictable even though you know he's going to do a twist even though you know he's going to like flip the script at some point in time which he kind of does he does like two or three times in this um <laughs> which Again, if you ever watch his films, this is his this is his thing. This is his niche. Um, I think the decision to go the route that he did works for the film. It it's his style. It fits with the aesthetic. It fits with the writing of the other films. It just to me it worked better for what style of film this was for, uh, as this was. Um, but again, that's just me. Um, the actors, um, uh, what's his name? God, the guy who plays Beast. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. But that guy, phenomenal, right? He was phenomenal in Split. He's still the same. Phenomenal in this, in uh, Glass here. Uh, Bruce Willis was great in Unbreakable. He was, uh, spoiler alert, if you've never seen Split, he shows up at the end of Split as a, <gasps> oh my gosh, you know, which, you know, if, if, it, if me, I absolutely lost my mind when that happened. I completely lost my mind. I love that twist at the end of that. That was, that, uh, he was again in the fore, in the front of the film, um, he was he's main character throughout the entirety of the film uh, so bruce willis does a fantastic job playing um the overseer or david um and there is some other characters that came in there's a doctor that comes in i love uh she was getting on my nerves and uh but that works it again it works you got to have a character that comes in and disrupts things and uh, that's exactly what she does she comes in and she kind of disrupts the dynamic and what's happening with each and every of these characters but uh, plays into the twist the female lead in split she returns and she plays a important role in this she's tied to the beast character and they keep that going uh mr glass's mother returns for a a little bit more of a stronger role uh she's not there a lot but she definitely comes in and placed with some importance to this uh saga david's son makes a return from the original unbreakable he's grown up now and he's actually assisting his dad now so if you um if you know anything about the punisher or mm, birds of prey uh there's you know there's like what microchip who's like the computer wizard guy who helps out the punisher or you know there's oracle uh who used to be bat girl i think she's like you know the one who's the computer whiz and helps out the other her heroines and so David son makes a return and that's what he does he's helping his dad in uh, the pursuit of like bad guys and things like that so I thought that was really cool plays in with the whole comic book genre of things uh it was good to see him come back he did a great job uh, just as well as he did in, in Unbreakable so that was really cool Samuel L Jackson uh is not 
in the forefront of the film. Um, obviously, Glass is kind of more his story a little bit more. Even though you got a, some of it in Unbreakable, this is kind of like the other meat of it. Um, and Samuel does phenomenal. He, he, you know, everyone does their thing very well. Uh, I actually really like him as Mr. Glass. I, I he's believable um, as a villain. Uh, you almost want to empathize or sympathize with him. Like you, you. This is another villain character where you're kind of like, I like, I like him. Um, you know, but he is, he's a villain. He's insane. Geniusly insane, if you will. Uh, so love that part. Another good thing that did well with this was that M was able to mix, uh, thriller, a bit of horror, drama, psychological drama, um, there's definitely some action. It's not an action-packed film, but he does fill in some action there that uh, feels good. It feels good. I think I would have liked to see more. I think I would have liked to see just just smidge it, just a little bit more uh, battling, a little bit more of epicness going on because we are talking about uh, humans with extraordinary abilities here. And it's again, it's not like high flying, uh, you know, shooting fire out of your out of your fingertips or anything like that. But it's still extraordinary, which is the point of this, you know. And uh, I I like that they intermix like realism with surrealism, and it just it he does a good job of melding these genres and things together or elements together to make it an engaging film. Uh, it doesn't get lost in itself uh, too much. Um, so I thought that was interesting. That was pretty good. Um, colors, I noticed that he used colors um, in the films to kind of to kind of help lend itself to the progression and to what this film is. You know, you purple was used. And whenever you see purple, it was always... It was blatant in your face at times, and then there's other times where it was a bit more subtle, but it was always surrounding Mr. Glass and villain, you know, villain. Um, yellow, uh, I, I, I don't know if there's a psychological thing behind the colors here. Uh, there may be, I didn't dig that deep into it. I just seen the film, so I'll be digging deep into it later, but um, yellow was used anytime it was kind of in reference to uh, the horde or the beast um, and you got both here's what's interesting you even though they were directly connected to these things uh, there was also um, the softer side of the connection again the female character connected to beast um, David's son connected to him and Mr. Glass's mother connected to him. They all sported these colors to let you know that they're connected to these characters and usually on a softer side of things. These were like the, you know, the good, the goodness behind the craziness of these main characters. And then the green uh, corresponds with David or the overseer. Um, so I thought it was cool. I thought I liked the use of colors. I felt that it was a little late to the game, um, but I did enjoy the incorporation of them. Comic nerd uh, vocabulary thrown around in there, origin story, and uh, they even had a part where they had two comic book, book nerds in the back, you know, awkwardly or weirdly, you know, you know what we do, talking about elements of the comic book of some comic book they were looking at which uh lend itself to the whole twist um so it was cool expected i don't know if it's a homage or poking a little fun uh probably a bit of both um but definitely that's what this is all about uh problems with it 
Mm, it's the usual stuff that Knight does, the overwriting. Sometimes I find him to be a bit pretentious. I don't know if that's a bit mean, but you know, he kind of like holds the audience hands and he starts to overwrite. And so he starts to kind of like talk you through the process. You know, he, you know, the characters are talking you through what's going on. Um, you know, like the, the, the annoying doctor who's talking to the son. Oh, your mother died from this. Could that be, you know, why this is all? It's just, it, it, it gets a little you'll pick up on it and you go why why are they talking about this why are they you know diving into this thing with in such specific uh in such a specific nature you're just kind of like let's get on with it already uh there was a really weird scene uh where and it's always a weird scene when knight puts himself in the film because he does this he puts himself in a scene that just does not need to be there doesn't need to be there it just and it gets weird it gets weird because it doesn't need to be there for first of all and he gives himself lines that uh for what and <laughs> it just i feel like he wants to be the new stanley like i feel like he he wants to be stanley so bad and so he puts himself in these scenes that has nothing to do with the movie at all whatsoever and he gives himself lines that you're just like okay night yes we know it's your movie you know but he just wants to kind of jab it home so it's it's a bit it's a bit weird and pretentious and that's what he does um other i was i was wondering if there was some holes uh, I, I would have to watch the other film to see if there was like some other plot holes, but he definitely throws some elements in there to kind of tie everything together, like with Mr. Glass and and his geniusness and how everybody's connected. Um, it's cool. It works. It's a little. Uh, what's 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 that movie? Uh, uh, Saw. It's a little Saw. You know, like Saw ish. Or um, a little like um, Final Destination, you know, where they're just kind of like, yeah, we're going to throw this little bit in here. We're going to tie it all together and it's going to be like. Overall, uh, the film was solid. It was solid. It progressed well. It got a little slow. But again, that's kind of the style um, that he does in all of these films. And so I expected it to be that way. Uh, I felt good with the action. I felt good with with the storytelling. Um, it was good. It was solid. Uh, it, it fit very well with the other two movies. Um, so if you like the other two movies, I don't see no reason why you wouldn't like this. He he does not deviate from what made those great from, you know, so if you enjoy those, you definitely should be enjoying this one because he uses the same techniques. He uses the same storytelling um, style. Um, the cinematography is pretty good. Um, so, yeah, I, I definitely say go watch it. Go check it out. Judge it for yourself. I enjoyed it. Um, because I enjoyed the other movies, it lends itself to my nerdy, geeky side of things, uh, and I enjoyed that. Um, the twists were good. I enjoyed the twists, and again, some people didn't like it. I actually think it worked for the style of film it is, um, so I think it actually was a good choice to do it that way. Um, I It kind of left you wondering if they are gonna do more or if this is actually the end uh, I would be okay with either actually uh, and I never really say that but if he did decide to come out with another one that maybe didn't directly come from it wouldn't be directly about these characters but it will be born from that um, I would I think I would enjoy that um, but you know you never know so anyways uh, I'm not going to give it a number or whatever. Go check it out. You know, get your own thoughts on it. But that's my review. I hope you enjoyed that. Rambling. Um, as always, peace and love.